Hey YouTube, had a special request from one of my subscribers yesterday. He wanted me to make a video showing my complete shot making process from start to finish. I'm going to attempt it. Not sure how well it'll work. But first of all, he wanted to see what the tank and the burner and all that stuff looked like. So here we go. This tank is just a metal square tank, 14 by 14 width and length, and then 16 inches deep. As you can see, I've got some brick sitting in there, which just acts as uh, uh, heat sinks. They kind of keep the fluid from getting uh, hot so quickly. And they take up a little space. So it, this tank actually holds 10 gallon, which it would be somewhat more than that if I didn't have the brick in there. And it works out good because it's two five gallon buckets and I just empty both those in. The little overflow here, it's just a, a pipe nipple that you can adjust turn up and down to get your level uh, exactly where you want it. <clears throat> Just stick the screwdriver in there and, and move it up and down a little bit. Uh, when you're installing that in, in the side and welding it in, just make sure you turn it where it's fairly tight so it will stay in position when you, when you adjust it. If it's too loose, it'll flop around. So anyway, uh, this, um, this pot I've got sitting inside my tank. And in the bottom, you can see there's some holes drilled, which lets the water or the fluid uh, drain out. And I've got a, some screen wire in there that keeps the shot from falling through. And I've just got an ingot sitting there to hold down the uh, the screen wire from because it'll kind of float up if when you start pouring fluid in. So that's basically the tank. Um, the burner is just a regular 220 volt, uh, eight inch stove burner. And this, this is a very simple setup for me. It's not fancy. I'm not trying to sell this setup, um, even though I do sell these shop makers. You just take a piece of uh, 11 gauge and uh, cut you a circle in it, set your burner pan in it. One thing I want to mention is right here in the front, you can see you want to get this burner as close to the front of the tank as you can, and you have to cut off part of that... Uh, that pan that sits in there or it sits your burner too far back and it might it interferes with getting the front of your pot hot enough so always uh, if you're building one of these scoot that as far up front as you can and you can even grind off a little bit of this bracket here uh, this bracket runs back here and you've got one on each going this direction you can even grind that off a little to get the burner forward just a little bit more and a little bracket back here to uh, hold my pot from sliding forward. You see some of these shop makers online and they've got brackets all over the place. I guess they think they're going to get hot and start flying or something. I don't know where they think they're going to go. But uh, all you want to worry about is keeping the thing from sliding forward. And uh, that would be a catastrophe. So um, I'm going to pause this for a second and go to the next step. Yeah, getting ready to pour uh, the last bucket of uh, coolant in. This is a uh, this is a mixture of uh, water soluble oil and water. I start out with about a gallon and a half of oil and three and a half gallons of water. And if I need to adjust it, uh, I, I can always add a little bit more oil. The main thing is you want it oily enough that your your shot doesn't crack and pop when it hits it. If you get it too light, too much water, it will uh, cause your shot to explode. If you get it too oily, it can uh, slow down the cool rate of your shot and actually cause them to deform when they, when they reach the bottom of the tank. Okay, I put the pot onto the burner and got it adjusted. I'm going to see if I can get down here and show you this bottom of this. If you'll see, the back of that lip is just almost touching the um, metal where the burner is sitting. I leave just a tiny little air gap in there and I don't want it sucking any heat away from that lip. Now. I've never ran this pot before. 
This is a pot that a guy gave me a while back that somebody had copied my design some years ago and um, it wouldn't run. They had the lip or the ramp totally wrong. It was just a mess. Uh, and the guy had basically jumped it and he said, I'll give them back to you. I said, well, somebody, I didn't make that pot, but somebody copied my design because it's got the, it's got the uh, divider in the middle. And I recently started cutting a part of this down. Um, it used to stick up even with this, but I got to thinking that's just a lot of extra metal up there that uh, allows heat to escape. And the, the lead never gets this high. So there's no point in having all this extra metal up here just uh, getting rid of your heat. So I took this old pot and uh, re-welded up the front and re-drilled it and put a new lip on it. And my subscriber was asking me some things about uh, drop distances and the length of the, the ramp uh, or the and, and the angle of the ramp. So the ramp sits at about... If you, if you put an angle gauge on that uh, right now, it's going to say about 32 degrees. And um, the, the angle of the burner is about 12. So you've got to make those two work together. You set this at 12. And your, your angle when you weld this onto the bottom of the pot should come out to 32 degrees when you've got it sitting on your burner. Uh, let's see. Um, now, this pot... I've drilled it to make number fives. I've never made fives before, so who knows what's going to happen here. Uh, it may not run a lick. It may run perfect. I have no clue. But uh, uh, I've set the distance down a little further uh, on, the, on the ramp up to the pot to give the shot a little bit more room to uh, drop because if it's too close, it'll turn into a steady stream and then you you shut her down and you're done so hopefully that's enough uh i usually allow about a quarter of an inch on number sevens and a half and sixes will usually get by with a quarter but if it ever starts streaming also it can start streaming if you get your head pressure too high so you got to be careful with that don't put too much lead in that front chamber uh, you want to keep just enough that it runs consistently. Not If you ever get too carried away with lead back here and put too much and it overflows too much, then you can, you can overflow the, uh, the drippers and they'll over, overload the drippers and they'll start streaming. So it, it's all about learning how to do it and uh, getting in time with it, keeping your lead put in at the appropriate time. These pots run about two and a quarter pounds a minute. And it takes warm weather. Uh, you try to do this on a cold day and, and the pot can't keep up. It takes warm weather, at least in the 70s, before they can uh, keep the lead flowing consistent. Any cooler than that, and they'll kind of stop and start. And you have to kind of wait on them. But, uh, you know, that's not a big deal either. It just slows your production down a little bit. I usually make about 125 pounds of shot per hour. And uh, that's just sitting there, you know, watching, listening to the birds sing. But um, I'm going to pause for a second. And when this thing gets going, we'll see if it works. When your pot's totally empty, like this one was, it takes a little while to get all your lead melted and started. Um, and once it all gets that big bath of lead uh, built up in the back there, that's a huge heat source, and it allows you to melt your lead much faster than in a normal shot maker. So, uh, it's just a waiting game now, but uh, I'll get back to you shortly. As you can see, the front chamber of this pot is about, uh, looks like, gosh, I don't know. I don't really go by a specific measurement. I just go by looking at it. But this looks like it's about almost an inch and a half uh, deep. And you need at least that much because if if you don't, uh, I've got one pot that this this other guy made come along with this one. He had like three of these things. And he'd had various people, I guess, try to copy mine and build them for him, but he never really get to use them. But he had one like was, was like an inch. 
and it runs really good after I got it rebuilt. But what it does, it the the head pressure is much more sensitive, and it it, it runs out of lead much quicker. So this will give you more reservoir in here to keep it running more consistent. Also, uh, the length of the the run down on the lip there should be at least three quarters of an inch. Once it hits, comes out of the dripper and hits the ramp, it should at least have three quarters of an inch to roll. Well, it just took off. So, looks like it's going to be doing okay. These are number fives. Looks like I've got plenty of distance from the fall because they're not... Uh, they're not streaming. Now, I drilled the holes uh, 31 thousandths of an inch for these for these drippers. So, uh, that should be, that should be fives because you drill, you drill 29 thousandths for true sixes, which is going to come out about 110 thousandths for six. And, um, It's, I've got uh, I've got 16 drippers running here, and I think that's about all I could run with number fives uh, and keep the lead flowing. Could probably slow down just a little bit here. Put a smaller ingot in so it'll melt faster and see if that'll catch it up. I got my pot turned down a little bit too because it was a little too hot there in the beginning. I'll get it going here in just a minute when I get this heat cooking. Now, <clears throat> we're going to watch it take off here again shortly. When this pot gets heated back up, I, I turned the burner down a little bit because it was, uh, I, had a, I heard a few shot crack and pop there when I first it first started running. But uh, it'll go here shortly. <clears throat> it's amazing how sensitive uh, the heat control has to be. Uh, you can turn that burner down. You know, it's normally like cherry red, and that's where it needs to be. You can turn it down just a little bit, and it'll just shut everything down. It's amazing. Okay, it's going to go here shortly, and, and you can see that the pot is running good. Come on, baby. Don't overflow on me. You're getting too much there. Give it time to heat up a second in the front chamber. Come on. Oops, it fell off in the front. Come on. It's just about ready. Let me give it just a little boost here. I normally don't have to do this. You just needed that little touch. And that'll run constantly as long as you keep the lead fed to it. And you have to put in an ingot about about every 30 seconds because if you're running two pounds a minute, these ingots are right at a pound a piece. And uh, so you can figure it's got to you got to keep it flowing. Okay, I'm going to shut down for a minute or pause this, and when I get ready to start cleaning the washing shot, I'll, I'll turn it back on. So now I'm just pumping this uh, fluid out. I use this little pump that, that goes onto an electric drill and uh, pump it back out into my two buckets.
after you pump the fluid out, uh, you've got your shock. Now, normally, I run about 125 pounds. This is about 100. I'm running a little bit low on time, so I quit at 100 pounds. But uh, we're going to take it out, dip it out into uh, buckets and wash it, and uh, put it out to dry. I'm simply going to uh, take this down to the lower part of my uh, work area and spray water hose through it. It washes right off. As you saw earlier, the bottom of this bucket's got holes in it. And I will empty at least half of this out into a bucket and carry it down and just stand and spray water hose through it until it comes out clean at the bottom. And that's all you got to do. And it's done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it was a little bit long.